Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about market memory, which is a pretty fascinating concept that I think is probably taken for granted by a lot of people. But in order to understand what market memory is, we have to understand that in financial markets, there are some price levels that are more important than others. And that's just how it is. You can pretty much see it on any chart. Sometimes we know why the level is important. Most of the time we don't, but it doesn't really matter. We just want to know where they are. So these levels are called resistance levels and support levels. Now, if market's trending higher, I have a chart here at CVS, which is a really good example of market memory. Um, when a market's trending higher, like here, there's not enough sellers around or supply around to fill all of the buy orders or the demand. So the buyers are forced to pay higher prices. When we get up to a resistance level, well, the tie turns. There's more than enough supply to go around. There's more than enough sellers to go around. So the price stops going higher. And then we get these sell-offs after we hit resistance a lot of times because investors who were trying to sell around this level start to realize there are other sellers around, which is why the price isn't going any higher. And then they get worried that they're going to miss selling. So they start to undercut each other and it starts a snowball effect. Now, when a market is going lower, it's because there's not enough demand or buy orders to absorb all of the supply or sell orders. When we get to support, the tie turns. All of a sudden, there is enough demand. And a lot of times when we get to support, we tend to rally. And it's the opposite of what happens after resistance levels. It's we have buyers that are afraid they're going to miss out. They think there's, they sense that there's other buyers around, which is why the prices stop going lower. And they go and they try to get out of them. So know where these levels are really makes trading a lot easier because when something gets to a port level, it tends to be like a crossroads. It's pretty rare that something hangs out there for, eh, you know, a, an extended time period. Even here, I mean, we can see that we were up and down and up and down. All right, so now, what is market memory? Well, market memory refers to the fact that sometimes these important support and resistance levels can retain their importance for a long time. Sometimes it's way longer than you think. Now look at this chart of CVS. Last February on good earnings, the stock ran up and where did it hit resistance? Right around 111. Where did it hit resistance back in July and August of 15? Right around 111. So that's a market memory. Here we are eight years later and or seven years later and we find resistance at pretty much the exact same level. So that's a really good case of market memory, or a good example, I should say. The $83 level here, now remember this is an eight year chart, so we're looking at long time frames here. The $83 level was resistance for two and a half years. Now, how can this help you? Well, just say hypothetically you bought CVS and it's rallying and you're thinking like, where should I sell it? Well, you look into the past and you can see if it's getting close to a level that was previously resistance, there's a good chance it's resistance again. So two and a half years. The 52 level was support for a year. And then the 77 level was resistance for a year. And here we have another level that was important. It was resistance here and then it became support over here right and support over here and that's over the course of uh, that's over the course of let's see that's over the course of about two years so again market memory it means the important price levels of support and resistance can retain their importance for a long time sometimes longer than you think and it's people take this for granted but it's kind of it, it illustrates how much the market is driven by psychology and not fundamentals. If you listen to the media pundits, they try to associate every little move with some kind of fundamental news, and that's just not how it works. Yeah, so that's just not how it works. So market memory, right? Resistance, resistance, support. All right, everyone. So I think that's all I have to say on market memory today. But if, you, if you're someone who's into charts, and I kind of assume you are if you're listening to me, it's uh, look on some charts on maybe some five or 10 year time frames and see if you can find some market memory. And there's a good chance that if whatever you're looking at gets to that level, you'll be able to trade successfully off of it. 
Thank you, everybody. I will talk to you soon.